Bill's poster boys have arrived, but this is not the same dance we've seen time in and time out. The Goku vs. Sonics of the past featured a wide variety of matchups, from kid versions, game versions, alternate versions, and even three-on-threes. Now, it's time we enter the real debate, the strongest incarnation of each character. Archie Sonic vs. Xenogoku, the mother of all Sonic vs. Goku debates. Today, we find out which series truly has the strongest main protagonist. Today, we rewind Rumble. Before we can discuss Xenogoku, we first need to discuss two different topics. The Time Patrol and the different timelines that take place in this series, Super Dragon Ball Heroes. They are alternate timelines with different versions of Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, and others. So the Saiyan that is facing Archie Sonic today is not the exact Universe 7 Goku that we all know and love from the canon anime. This is the alternate timeline version known as Xenogoku. The Time Patrol is a group of fighters set up by both Future Trunks and Xeno Trunks in order to help stop a force known as the Dark Empire. With a name like Dark Empire, you don't need much explanation to know that these guys are up to no good. In fact, they want to interfere with time, which is obviously evil. This empire is made up of mostly members of the Demon Realm race and a few Saiyans who have been corrupted by dark magic. As we all know, there are very strict laws in the Dragon Ball multiverse. For example, even time traveling is a violation of the law, which got Trunks into some hot water even though he was doing it for the greater good. Now Trunks didn't go off Scott's free. He had to serve in the Time Patrol to redeem himself. His task was to correct the distortion of history, and of course this explains why Trunks is part of the group, but it's not the same reason why Goku is a part of the group. And this is due to the manipulation of time barriers. Xeno Goku's timeline was altered, and he was eventually manifested and recruited by the Supreme Kai of Time to fight as a Time Patroller. The Supreme Kai of Time needed Trunks to think of the best suited warrior to face Demigra. And of course, Goku is the best option from Xeno Trunks' memories. Xeno Trunks has never faced Bobobo before. So now you know why Xeno Goku is an important member of the Time Patrollers, but you still don't know who Xeno Goku is or how powerful he can become. Believe it or not, for most of Xeno Goku's life, he shares a very unique timeline to the Goku you know and love. They share many similarities, but also many differences. For example, they both went through their own Frieza and Cell sagas, and both lived through their own versions of Dragon Ball GT, at least in a non-canon sense. Much like the multiverse theory of other fictional realms, timelines do have their differences, but in many cases they also have their similarities. And of course, let's bring up those differences because there are quite a few differences between Xeno Goku and quote-unquote canon Goku. Xeno Goku did not experience the events of Dragon Ball Super, and which had him unaware of transformations like Super Saiyan Blue until his encounter with the main timeline Goku. Now don't take this as a notion that he is weaker than canon Dragon Ball Super Goku, because that couldn't be further from the truth. Xeno Goku has plenty of unique abilities and powers that even regular Goku can't compete with. For example, his Super Saiyan 4 form actually taps into God Ki, so it's sort of like the best of both worlds between Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan 4. And then of course there's his Power Pole and Ki Sword. Many of you know about the Power Pole from Kid Goku's days, but Xeno Goku kept it a part of his arsenal even into adulthood. The Key Sword is not to be confused with the Key Blade. They may sound the same, they might even kind of look the same, but these are two different types of Key themed weapons. The Key Sword was specifically designed to defeat demons. It was actually powered and forged by the power of time. Pretty much what this means is, is that it can pierce through voids and it grants users resistance to demonic hacks. As for Xeno Goku's power, Bay Xeno Goku was able to easily beat up monster form Demigra. Until 
Until, of course, he went into his final form. And keep in mind, his base form blast was going to destroy the history of Dragon Ball. In the Xeno non-canon story, the Dragon Ball multiverse contains an infinite number of alternative three-dimensional worlds. This makes Xeno Goku a fifth dimensional being, as he was able to also keep up with and is faster than Demigra. So if Goku is far stronger and more powerful than this guy, that would place him at a mid-high fifth dimensional in his full powered state. He should also have immeasurable speed for this same reason. Overall, Xeno Goku is the strongest non-canon incarnation of Goku that was ever created that wasn't an OC. We've discussed Archie Sonic many times in the past across numerous episodes and multiple series. So for this analysis, I'm going to feature some new amazing research from the one and only One Punch Bros. And some research from Magic Cloud 6. To share some crazy powerful things Archie Sonic has done, we are going to bring up things that weren't brought up in older episodes. In the Extended Universe spin-off, where Sonic can pull off feats like Shattering Time with his own speed, collapse the entire multiverse and reality warp on a supreme scale, most know he can destroy the entire multiverse. But the question at hand is, how big is the Archie Sonic verse and what is it bound to? Now before we answer that, let's start with some basic statements and work our way up especially within the confines of this spin-off. Sonic, being the good trooper he is, decided to foil Eggman's plans once again. In order to do this, Sonic had to overcome the Super Genesis wave and save his multiverse. This resulted in the entire multiverse being destroyed. Don't believe it? The good author here said it so himself. Understand that the multiverse that Archie Sonic has is like an infinitely branching roadway and it's contained by Cosmic Interstate, also called the path to here, there, and everywhere. Archie Sonic Verse is an alternative reality to Image Comics slash Top Cow via a crossover. If you don't know, Top Cow is 20 to infinite dimensional. It also has an omniverse. Remember that Super Genesis Wave? Well, the Super Genesis Wave was stated to have no limits of reality warping power, and was stated to be able to not just control all universes, but all creation as well. The Image Comics slash Top Cow crossover is for certain canon to Archie Sonic because during Ken Pender's run, confirmed to be the life of Sonic and the Freedom Fighters before the Super Genesis Wave. And yes, I'm talking about THE Ken Penders, but in my opinion, and this is a legal disclosure that this is just my opinion, Ken Penders is the guy who owns the rights to Archie Sonic losing. You can do the research yourself. Only he has the right to make Archie Sonic lose in a fight, in my opinion, for legal disclosure. Just an opinion. Even though there may or may not have been court battles between Ken and Sega over who has the right to make Sonic lose. Sonic is no longer allowed to lose. Yeah, he can't fucking lose. He's legally forced to become a Gary Stu. Do not understand the creative crippling at play here. During Sonic 186, Mogul explains that somehow Sonic is protected by a great power that prevents Sonic from being defeated. No matter what happens, it does not matter what disadvantage Sonic is in. He will always win, and it might be illegal for him to lose. Again, just my opinion. Of course, the only way to stop this would be to rewrite all of reality, which is what Eggman attempted to do. Dr. Eggman developed a project from which he could rewrite all of reality reality and thereby rewrite Sonic himself, taking away the power of chaos. Ultimately, and maybe legally, Sonic still wins. After years of collecting power rings, Sonic became one of the greatest chaotic powers in all of existence, becoming the incarnation of chaos itself. This chaotic power creates a mystical aura that protects Sonic from the most important situations from which it would be impossible for anyone to survive. Then Sonic receives the following powers. Mind control, matter manipulation, magic nullification, plot manipulation, fate manipulation, and plot armor. Not plot and do stupidity plot armor, but actual unironic plot armor as an actual ability. So take everything you just learned now with the previous stuff we discussed about Archie Sonic, and this is the powerhouse that is compacted into a three foot blue hedgehog. And now, let's get ready for the fight. This battle will take place on Earth, and remember, there is no prep time. Let the battle begin! It's been so quiet around here since Fuse's been defeated. Oh well, I guess you can't have an exciting day every day. <laughs> 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 
Whoa! Who are you? I'm Sonic the Hedgehog, and I'm way past cool. Sorry if I scared you. I got bored, so I thought I'd check out other worlds. I came here because I heard there were some good chili dogs. You can run to other worlds? You must be strong. Wanna fight? Well, you're certainly fast to the point. I like that. Say, find me a chili dog after the fight. You've got it. Awesome! Was that... a dream? <laughs> Does this feel like a dream? Are you... the god of chaos in your universe? No, and don't say chaos. Now, about that chili dog. Hopefully you enjoyed that animation, and if you did, super special thanks to Team Animation Rewinds, it's Cheatham and YT. I'd also like to thank Kel's Kingdom for playing the voice of Goku, and 123 Gohans for playing the voice of Sonic. And I definitely owe a thanks to the One Punch Bros for the research slash notes on Sonic, and the Bad Time Trio 32 for the research slash notes for Goku. Thanks, and enjoy the post analysis. <laughs>the winner is Archie Sonic, but that means you're wondering if Ken Penders may or may not, in my opinion, own the rights to Archie Sonic losing, how did Archie Sonic lose against Sonic and lose in the Reality Warper Free For All? And to that I say, uh... No, 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 I'm, I'm just kidding. Those aren't official Archie Sonic adaptations. Just fair use fan parodies and reviews that don't truly represent Archie Sonic. They are all non-realistic, possibly hypothetical events that never canonically happen. So Ken, if you see Archie Sonic losing in any fan fiction animation, that's not the real Archie Sonic. Now, we can move on and talk about this match. And thanks to above line base outer versal Archie Sonic and Fate Hacks, Xeno Goku is likely not going to be Archie Sonic, even if he's a fifth dimension dimensional powerhouse. Thanks to research from the One Punch Bros, when Archie Sonic warped his entire multiverse in issue 251 using Chaos Control, this resulted in every single Ken Penders character to be erased from existence. Keep in mind, some of those characters include Enerjack, Master Mogul, a lot of members of the Echidna Tribe, Scourge the Hedgehog, the Chaos Force, the extra dimensional worlds within the Archie Sonic multiverse, and many more. This means that Archie Supersonic would be able to erase beings from existence when using Chaos Control. This would make Archie Sonic an even scarier threat than he already is. There is also outerversal evidence that Sonic is actually the author of the Archie comics himself. 
which may or may not be evidence that in our non-legal opinion that Ken Penders owns the rights to Archie Sonic losing, which means it may or may not be illegal for Archie Sonic to lose in any other sense. He can always write himself a victory. So if you're glad Archie Sonic won, comment down below, thank you Ken Penders. And if you're mad Archie Sonic won, comment down below, thank you Ken Penders. The winner of this rumble is Archie Sonic. On the next episode of Rewind Rumble.